Welcome back. I'm Connie Sokol, your host. And once again, I have another beautiful, stellar woman in studio who is talking with us about goal setting today. So if this is on your mind and you're thinking, I hate this, but I know I should love this. We have got scoops for you today. I'm so happy to have Ashley Stratton with us today. Hi, Ashley. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And when I say in studio, you guys know, I mean, in my studio, in my office, in my home, right? She is like in the Zoom in her house. And I love it. She's in the middle of moving. I just want to do full disclosure. And she's chasing down her kids. And I mean, this is how we roll. And it's a quiet corner. And it's like, all right, let's do this. We've got half an hour before she's going to be up. So let me tell you a little bit about Ashley. She is a speaker, a trainer, and a mother of four. And actually her love of speaking came when she was attending a college class, I believe, of Dan Clark. If you know the man, myth, the legend. He is a friend. I'm not name dropping. I'm saying I do know and can say, yes, he is as wonderful as he seems. And he is fantastic. She is also a disciple thought leader ambassador, and she speaks to women on effective goal setting as mom and for him. So we're going to talk about this today because this is a little different way and a different approach of goal setting. Usually it's very, um, what we call masculine way. It's driven, it's achievement. It's let's get in and do those three things and make it happen. And whoever gets to the top first gets the prize, right? But this is a different approach to goal setting and you feel really strongly about doing it differently. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about how this is different. Yes, absolutely. So I began to love goal setting from a really young age. And I was hyped up about goal setting from a young age, all through my teenage years. And I had my first touches with goal setting, um, doing pageants and being involved in leadership experiences in college. And I was on fire with goal setting. And then I became a mom to four young kids really fast. And But that passion never left me. And that desire to achieve and to accomplish and to go after what is important to me as a human being, right? Because even though we become a mom, sometimes there's things that still keep us alive, like our passions for running. I interviewed a mom who she said, you know, I love being a mom so much, but she had a seamstress business where she sews dance costumes and, and pageant costumes. And she said, but my passion is, is the seamstress business. And she said, it fills me up in a way that motherhood sometimes doesn't. And so she said, and I just feel like when I started studying about how do we still go after our goals, but still put our faith and our family first, when I started looking for that, I couldn't find it anywhere. And I am a devourer. Is is that a word devourer? Yes. yes. (laughs) self-help books and reading all about how to accomplish goals, how to set goals, how to do it the right way, how to plan effectively. And in all of these books, that idea was absent. And so I went on a journey starting about two years ago. I started an Instagram account to explore this idea because they said, if nobody's talking about it, then I've got to talk about it. And I thought, if I have this question too, I bet there's a lot more moms out there that have this same question that want to be the type of mom that is saying, you know what, I do have this passion that I want to go do. I want to run a marathon or I want to write a book or whatever it is, or I want to learn how to help people decorate their homes, but they have a family and they have their faith that's important to them. And they don't want to leave those on the back burner, but they still want to go after this goal. So there's just this, like, there's just this constant battle of how do I do it correctly? How can I go after my goals How can I achieve the things that I want to that still fill me up and bring me joy and that serve other people, but still show up for my family and I'm still able to have a relationship with God and still be able to put my faith first. Where does that balance lie? What does that look like? And so I have started that journey and that has been my focus for the past almost two years. And um, it's been very, very fulfilling for me like this. A lot of people have that passion, you know, to go run marathons and do that. And I'm like, my passion is figuring out how to set goals, how to do it the right way and put those most important priorities first so that other people can do that too. So that's oh. really where my passion lies. I love it. And you can feel it. Can you listeners, can you feel that? <laughs> it's coming right through the, the microphone. And that's so beautiful because 
you and I and listeners know that when you have first things first, you know, Stephen Covey thing, when you have first things first, when you have those things that matter first, everything else flows. And we talk a lot about that here of effortless living, of flow, living in flow, so that we're not hustling. Again, masculine and feminine energy need a balance. And we can't be masculine heavy, especially as feminine. We, we need to go in that flow because we have so many variables with children and relationships and, and community and callings and, and, and all of these things that pull at us that are things we want to do and that we've hoped to do and, and, and yearn to do, but still we're going to have to keep that balance and, and that alignment within us, or we're going to get off that hub and we're going to be, you know, off that flywheel. So what, what is something that you have found when you're talking with women, there's a lot of things that you do that will help them to be able to have that balance of faith and family, but we know it is about priorities. We know it's about intentional. We know it's about focus. So what are some of the things that you have found, or even just one piece of advice for women that you're like, you know what, if you do anything, do this, because let me just say right now, I've been talking to women for over 20 years. And every time I bring up goals, it's this cringe. They shy away from it. They feel nothing but guilt. It's a start stop cycle. So what, what are you able to do to help women kind of come out of that and see this in a new light? Okay. I'm going to say two things. So number one is um, I've gone through an interesting experience lately. So I have had this bout of vertigo for about two months where it doesn't leave me for 24 seven. I went on a Lake Pal trip and I came home and I haven't stopped rocking and it's been extremely debilitating. Um, I've had days where I haven't been able to get out of bed because I'm so dizzy and my head is spinning or I'll go into the kitchen and make something and then it wipes me out for two hours doing my regular things that I want to do um, have been very, very difficult. And through this experience, and I have wondered, I've wondered in my study in the past two years, what is it for mothers that is different in goal setting? Because I really feel like there's something different. Like when you mentioned the masculine and feminine energy, I think a lot of times when I read these goal setting books, I see a lot of that, like, okay, here's your three point plan. Yes. And if you do X, Y, and Z, you'll accomplish your goals. And, and a lot of that is good information or here's the plan to problem solving. And um, through this vertical experience though, I have created this um, program called my foundational five. And I really believe that women have to have these five foundational points to be whole at the end of their goal process. And that is what is different for women because a lot of times they'll get to their goal and they'll still feel, feel unfulfilled. Like I think of Kate Spade, she's a big, um, a big example. Like she, um, she accomplished every single goal you could probably ever imagine in the world's eye of what that is. And then she had all the success and money and then, and then she committed suicide. And I think what, what went wrong there? Like I had so much compassion for that. Like what, what happened there that wasn't whole? So I want women when they reach their goals to feel whole. I want their, I want them to feel like they have good relationships with their family, with God and with themselves. So one piece that I want to share with you, one piece of advice that I would give to women going after goals that again, I feel like is absent in a lot of self-help books. And this is one piece of my foundational five is self-compassion. Mm. I would have never said that had I not gone through this vertical experience, because I'm the type of person that I, I had one day where I was having experienced my vertical, I thought I should be able to walk through fire. Like, even if I'm going through an experience, I want to be the type of person that wakes up like, you know what, I can do this. You know, I can walk across cold and not burn my feet. Like just, just be like that. But, but I've had to step back and say, you know what, I need to have some self-compassion for myself going through the goal process. And isn't that the same for every single mom? Every single mom that I know has had something that has gone sideways on the path to their goals. Like maybe they had a baby and they're going through the hormonal changes of having a baby. And I would invite them in that situation to change the inner critic of saying, instead of saying, oh, I can't get out of bed today. I'm so tired. I was up with my baby. I can't. I can't go after my goals. I'd invite them to change the inner critic to the inner friend. Because if you were looking at a friend going through that experience, what would you say to them, right? 
Oh, would God. you say, oh, you should be able to wake up and do your top, your three things yeah, and go through it? Breakfast girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, you no. wouldn't. If you were talking to a friend, you'd say, you know what? Go take a nap. Like have have some self-compassion for yourself and just breathe for a second. And and not even not even when you go through hard experiences, but also on the daily. Like I have a pretty strict morning routine that I do for myself when I'm not experiencing vertigo. And I would beat myself up if I hit the snooze button. Like I and I would think, oh, and I would think all day long, what could I have done in those? those 15 minutes I hit the snooze. And if I hit the snooze twice, I was really beating myself up thinking like, what could I have done in those 30 minutes? I could have got this and this and this done. So I think even having the self-compassion on the daily, not even um, not even when you're going through something hard, but like maybe that self-compassion with hitting the snooze button, maybe you stayed up late to make sure you could get scriptures and prayer done with your kids. And that was the only time you had to connect with them. And so if you were a friend, talking to that person, you'd probably say, you know what, girl, you just stayed up to do prayer and scriptures, take the 15 minutes, you know? Exactly. And so I think that having self-compassion so that when we reach our goals, we are whole is the, is a huge foundational piece for women in the goal setting, goal setting part. And that's just one piece that I've come out with through this experience that has been really life-changing for me because I think that women are extremely hard on ourselves and the only our biggest enemy is that inner critic truly and if we can change it and practice the inner friend instead of the inner critic it can make a huge difference and something that I've been practicing lately too through this program is writing down my foundational five every day and and writing down how am I going to be self-compassionate today you know, and practicing the self-compassion because it's something that doesn't come easy. And when our brains are already hardwired to be critical, it's really difficult to get out of that unless you're doing a regular practice. So if I would say, if you're on the way to setting your goals, practice self-compassion on the way. I love that. And I can feel that resonate. I'm sure our listeners can feel that too. I remember after having, was it my fourth or fifth? I don't know. They all meshed together, but I remember a, a neighbor I had just met coming to the door and I said, Oh, I'm in my pajamas. You know, I said, I'm sorry. It's going to be like this for a couple of months. She's like, try a year, give it a year. <laughs> and I remember looking at her and thinking a year, like it's not going to take me a year. Oh, a year. Cause we had moved just before that. And I remember thinking, it's not going to take me a year to get these boxes undone and, you know, get myself together. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it did. And I love, there were moments when I felt that feeling of less than like, why can't I get it together and remembering what she said? And I, I did, I gave, I gave myself grace and said, oh, I'm giving myself a year to get back to normal. And that gave me the ability to be softer. And I love what you bring up because when we're softer with ourselves, we're softer with everybody else around us, everyone, whether it's the PTA lady or your coworker or your spouse or whatever, you're looking at them through that compassion lens rather than what didn't you get done? What should you have done? Why didn't you? It's more of, oh, I can see where you're at. I'm, I'm meeting you where you are. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Have you noticed that this has made a difference in other people that you've connected with? Yeah, I feel like it has too, just with my family and the place that I lead the most, which is in my home. I, I just feel like I find myself saying, and in my neighborhood, like I have a woman who suffers with Lyme's disease in my neighborhood and I've, and she's been able to get help and to be able to do that. And I, I just have had my heart just softened for her. And I thought, oh my goodness, I'm so grateful that you have been able to get help. And I had so much compassion for her and all that she's done because she's a dance teacher and she still goes to dance because she loves that. And, and I just think, I, I just set her on a pedestal because I thought, wow, you've been able to go through that, but I have so much compassion for her on the day she was down, you know, and the day she couldn't be, be doing. And you understood what that felt like. You know what it feels like to want with all your soul to be able to do X, Y, and Z and not be able to do it. And that keeps you in that space of, I feel like what's beautiful about feminine energy with goal setting is that we go back to purpose. And I think that's a huge piece. I know that helps me when I ask if I'm going to hit the snooze button, then I say, is it purposeful? Like, do I need this? Do I want this? Is this purposeful? Yes, it is. Or I'm not going to choose to do that 
work out this morning because I'm going to sit and talk with my daughter, which is exactly what happened the other day. And then we ended up going for a walk with another daughter that later that night. So it worked out beautiful. I think there's an element of trust that happens with women and goal setting, if we allow it, that will allow us to go. It's more than just me putting my head against the wind and bearing down, right? It's more of, I know that there's other things at play. I know there's God above. I know there's angels attending. I know that there's other people in my neighborhood that can help me. I know that there's other ways to work this than just the one way. And I think that's with us being so multitasking wired, where we can also tap into that multitasking ways of goals can be accomplished that other women can help us make that happen. Have you noticed that at all? Yeah. Well, and I really like what you said is you think is this purposeful and you go back to your purpose to help you remember. And that's another piece. Uh, that's a, another piece of my foundational five is remembering your passion and writing down daily. Why am I doing this? Why am I going after that goal? Cause when you can, when you can bring back into that focus, you can remember on the daily, Oh yeah, this is why I'm doing this it makes a huge difference to remember that purpose and that passion that you have behind it. Cause a lot of women, I think get going and get going. And then like, wait, why am I, why am I breaking my back to do this? But if you remember the purpose and the passion behind it, it's a, makes a huge, huge difference. Absolutely. And I think it also clears out those goals that don't belong, that are not serving you. I remember one gal talking to me, she moved into a neighborhood and everybody was running. So she started running half marathons and then she finally went, I don't even like running half marathons. I was just doing it because everybody else was, and I wanted to be in with friends and in the club kind of thing. And she was like, Finally, I realized I don't even like this. I'm going to put my energy to something else. And she started doing more writing. So it, it is a, a huge uh, sifter, I think, and a cleaner outer to be able to say, is this purposeful? And then that brings energy to the goal that we need. Because I, I tell women a lot, if if your focus is, is being a mom and, right, that means faith and family, then the other things that you do for goals should bring joy in some fashion. Now we're going to have, you know, you watch the Olympians and it's like, oh my goodness, blood, sweat, and tears, but it's, it's going to have a stretching, right? But there should be an element of joy. So if you're doing running, you don't like it. If you're doing Zumba and you're like, I hate Zumba, then do something else, right? And make it a goal that brings you that joy because there's power in the joy. Have you found that also? Yes, absolutely. And one thing that I think women don't do is just take the time to sit down and think, what is joyful for me? Because they're so dang busy doing all the daily things that need to be done. Like you got to do the grocery shopping and the laundry and help with homework and run carpool. And they don't even sit down to think, what is it that brings me joy? What is it that I would do if I had the time to do it? <laughs> Right. And just doing a brain dump, like a mind map, you know, just sitting down and putting like passion and joy in the middle and then spidering out and seeing what is it that brings me joy and taking the time to do that. I seriously wonder how many people listening to this podcast right now have actually written down physically, taken a pen and just done a brain dump, like a spider map with a circle in the middle, what brings them joy and then spidering out. Do you know what I'm talking about? Those yes. mind maps when you were a kid. Oh and yeah. The snowball brainstorm, yes. all of that. Yep. Yes. And just really figuring out what is my passion because I have actually talked to women several times in the past few weeks, which is surprising that have, have been in a transition phase where their kids are all back in school and they're, they have said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know who I am anymore. What do I do with my time now that my kids are older and they're stuck in this weird spot? And I wonder if they've taken the time to even think, what is it that brings me joy? And what is it that brings me joy so that it can help others? Because a lot of the time is what brings us joy is serving in our passion to help others. So if you do do the mind map, which I'd invite you to do, if you're stuck in that spot of what is it? I don't even know what brings me joy. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that have said that women and they look at other people and think, well, they're doing all this stuff, but I don't know what my thing is. Sit down, write it down physically. Don't do it on your phone or a computer, physically write it down because it activates a different part in your brain when you're writing and just do the spider map. Do a circle in the middle, joy, passions, and think about how you can serve somebody else with your passion and joy, because that will be the ultimate fulfillment. Uh -huh. I know like with me, um, when I 
um, was growing up, I had some really unique experiences to listen to some professional speakers. My first one I listened to was Andy Andrews. I mean, just knocked it out of the park. My dad was hosting an event when I was in high school and invited me to come. So I got to talk to him afterwards. I still remember every single story he told, one about Larry Bird, one about the popcorn guy that created the popcorn, and then um, the burn the boat story, the really popular. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to burn all the boats. We're going to burn know? the and ships. Then, yes. And then I heard, I got had touches with Dan Clark. I took a semester long class with him and he invited, and, and I've had just different touches with professional speakers and I had my own speaking opportunities and I realized how powerful a speech can be and how a speech can help someone else and change their life. And because I've been in situations where speeches have changed my life. And so I feel so passionate about a powerful speech and how that can help someone else. So when I, when I look at it through that lens, it's very, very fulfilling to me. So fulfilling to get up and give a powerful speech, especially I feel like even within the church, we have speakers all the time at so many events, like youth conferences and young women camps and even just firesides. And I feel extremely passionate about having wonderful speakers within the church to really help motivate people to come closer to Christ. And I want to be one of those people to help move that along. And so for me, that's very, very fulfilling. So I'd invite you to think about what is it that fills me up to serve in that way? You know, I have a sister who she feels extremely passionate about helping children who are suffering. And she just volunteered for the first time, her kids are all going back to school with the Underground Railroad. And she's a hairstylist and they need someone to cut these kids hair that are being rescued. And so she's going to volunteer to cut hair with these kids that are being rescued. And I thought that's so beautiful and it's so fulfilling to her to help these kids. So there are so many ways that you can use your talents and your gifts to serve and to help and to bring joy. And when you add on that piece and not just like, oh, I'm doing this all for me to bring me joy. When you make that switch of how can I help someone else? I mean, it's all a difference maker. Oh, I love that. And the way that you can contribute. And that is a huge game changing piece. I love that. I love that exercise that you suggested. In fact, we have on ConnieSogel.com. If you want to go on that, our purpose challenge we're doing in August, we always do them, but you're able to go on and we have a five-step thing to be able to do it. If you're like, I don't know what that looks like. And it helps you define your sweet spot, but there's lots of ways to figure out your passion. And that's a key piece because that's going to funnel that energy into everything that you do. And that's where the goals come from. Once you define your passion, then you can take the steps, the goals in order to say, this is how I'm going to fulfill that. And that's what makes the goal enjoyable and makes it juicy. And that whole thing of joy, I think I was just literally um, reading a talk this morning by Kevin J. Worth, and he is president of Brigham Young University, and it was called Enduring Joy. And he was talking all about the power of joy and how important it is for us to prioritize that. So I love that you brought that up because if the goals are not bringing us joy, we're not doing it right. That's for sure. And I love the point too, that you make that I meet a lot of women like that too, that they are, the kids are going back to school. I just met another one this morning. We got done with the pile class and we're chatting and she's talking about, I don't know what I'm going to do this fall, but I feel the rumble, right? And that's the women that I work with and what we work with as disciple thought leaders is, hey, if you are feeling a rumble and we can help you move forward in your goals for him, it makes all the difference. And the light bulb was going on and I started saying things and she was like, oh, I've been wanting to do retreats and I've been wanting to do this and I've been wanting to do that. And suddenly talking about it and verbalizing it with someone else, she started making connections. So it wasn't on the paper, it was in the words we were saying. And she was making these connections of, I can see how the thing that I'm feeling a desire to do, I could actually do, and people can help me do it if I will get focused on it. So I love that you bring that down. Fabulous stuff that you have shared with us. I know the women listening are gonna be like, I want more. Where can they reach you for more goal setting goodies? 
So you can find me on Instagram. It's at real Ashley Stratton and it's Ashley with two E's. And also on my Facebook page, it's called Ashley and co co dot. And you can find more good goal setting goodies there that you can download for you. And some recent things that I'm working on is I've been through Connie's um, ambassador program to host these disciple thought leaders retreats to help women put their faith and family first and still go after their goals and find their passion because that's a huge part of their retreat really niche that down so i am so excited to be doing that and i'll be hosting those coming up soon too so i'm so excited and you can also check out um, our retreat schedule so you can see when ashley's going to be hosting her retreat and we can get you hooked up there because it is phenomenal and she is a powerhouse when she speaks you're like there is no way you cannot feel motivated after you are listening and in during while you are listening to her you are like we are doing this no matter what <laughs> i love it love it love it thank you so much for taking time to be with us today and reminding us that we can do the things we desire in our soul to do and it's taking those baby steps to make it happen and doing it together with other women who are passionate and faith and family focused thanks for being here thank you and as always, if you love these things and especially this Disciple Thought Leader series, check it out below to rate, review, and subscribe. And if you want more freebies, purpose challenge, more information about retreats and our thought leadership circle, you are welcome to check out ConnieSocal.com or give me a call. I love to do a consultation call and check out where you're at and what we can do to help you move forward for him. As always, great job in taking a next step in living your purposeful, organized, and joyful life.